Sometimes it's fun to do a bit of theory crafting about software. For example, imagining what a piece of software that doesn't exist could possibly look like, or maybe a new interaction method, how it could actually work. One example of this is what could a GUIified terminal actually look and act like. What I mean by this is a terminal where its primary interaction method isn't typing out commands, it's instead some form of GUI interaction. And one Reddit user had exactly this thought and actually made a mock-up of how it could possibly look. Now keep in mind, this is a mock-up, so it's not intended to be pretty. What it's doing is showing the content and the way it could be laid out. And I'm sure someone's going to have an instant negative reaction to a new interaction method that is different from what they're used to. But try to open up your mind to new ideas and think about the way this could possibly work, even if, you know, you would never use it yourself, having it as an option there to someone who may want to use it. So what problem is this even trying to address then? Well, with both GUIs and CLIs, you can sort of think of them both as a puzzle. What you're going to be doing is piecing together components to get some sort of desired result. And with a well-designed GUI, you can sort of infer what each of the buttons are going to be doing because they're going to have icons, tooltips, similar programs are going to have similar sort of icons and similar sort of functions on these buttons. You can sort of basically look at a GUI and work out how it works without looking at any sort of documentation. But this can't really be done with a CLI interface because all of the information on your system is going to be hidden behind manuals and a lot of this information is typically designed around already advanced users. Now, terminal utilities do have a way to address this by having things like tab completion for the options that are available, but without having an understanding of how those options actually work, that tab completion isn't really that useful. So these mockups show basically how a user would go about interacting with the application and sort of take you through a step-by-step -step process. So the typical way of using a terminal, let's say I wanted to go and run the pacman command. What I would go and do is I would go and type out pacman. Pretty straightforward. In this situation though, you would have the option of both typing out commands, but also a, in this case, a drop down to actually select the command you want to use. Now this does have a mistake on it. These should not actually be listed inside of the same place as the application you want to run. While I think this is an interesting idea, it already starts to show cracks at this fairly fundamental level with the drop down. How do you go and efficiently sort through a dropdown? You can obviously go and scroll through it, that's the basic interaction method, but even on a freshly installed Arch Linux system, you're going to have hundreds and hundreds of entries. So the better way to filter that is by using the search option here to go and type out the command. But now you've effectively defeated the entire purpose of having this dropdown. I feel like a dropdown doesn't make this any clearer than the way that something like ZSH already does this, where if I go and press tab, it'll show me all of the different options available, and then I can go and, you know, select which option I actually want to use. But there is a way to address this, and that is by splitting out the programs into separate sub-menus. So all of your package managers could be in the package manager menu, you'd have a file manager menu, a search commands menu, networking, system scripts, user scripts, things like that. Now, there's a reason why this is listed as one of the author's pipe dreams, because this, while it might sound doable, this is basically impossible to make actually useful. So how do we make categories? Well, you have to categorize applications. And if we go with a basic install of, let's say, Arch Linux, this is well enough doable. You know exactly what software is going to be available. But what about outside of that? What if you install a new terminal? What if you install a new file manager, a replacement for LS, things like that? This very quickly gets to be all of the applications you actually care about are just in the miscellaneous category because none of them have actually been categorized properly. This can certainly be alleviated by having users crowdsource application names so things actually get categorized properly, and absolutely that will do it. But it's not like it's possible to categorize 
every single application that everybody uses, at least for a very, very small project like something like this would be. Plus, you have to be very careful with the way that your categories are actually set up, because there's going to be a lot of applications out there that either sit in multiple categories, and that might be fine, or might just be really, really difficult to categorize because they don't really nicely fit into anything you might want to mention them as. One thing you may have noticed is next to basically everything, there is this question mark. Now, what this is supposed to be is a thing you can click on to show you a tooltip. Now, okay, I understand what we're trying to do here, but do not do your tooltips through some clickable mechanism. There is already a metaphor that exists for bringing up tooltips. You hover over the thing that you want to have a tooltip for. The reason why we don't have question marks is they basically just add unnecessary clutter to the UI where we already have a method that works. Tooltips sort of have a similar problem to the categorization. You do have the option of just taking an excerpt from the man page but you can't really decide automatically what excerpt you should actually take. Do you take the first paragraph? Do you take the fifth? Maybe the first one doesn't actually explain anything. It's really hard to work out how you do that automatically, so you'd probably have to write them manually. In which case, well, now you have the exact same problem as a categorization issue, where for a basic install it's fine, but after that it sort of becomes unmanageable. Now moving on from selecting the program to run, we have selecting the arguments and the options. This works in basically the same way where you have a drop down list and you can select what you want to use. But in this case, it's actually much, much more manageable to actually have this be automatically generated because man pages are laid out in a standardized manner and the options are all tagged in the exact same way. So parsing those out is really easy assuming the program has a man page, but I've noticed that for especially a lot of GitHub projects, a lot of them don't bother with man pages and just have the help option. If you know a help option does exist, if people lay it out in a standardized way, I guess there's a way you could pass that out, but I feel like for a lot of programs, you would still have to do that manually. The other problem it has is there's no indication that it supports a pipeline or redirection. Both fairly standard things you might want to do inside of a terminal. So let's say you want to go and pipe the output from this command into this command and then redirect the output to some random text file, for example. Obviously, this wouldn't need to support every single thing you can do inside of a terminal and with your shell, but it needs to support at least the basic functionality that every single person using a terminal would expect to be there. Also, one thing to note is uh, this right here, dash SYU, capital S to be specific. This is not an option inside of Pac-Man. It is a very common thing that you'll write together because what it's going to do is go and sync your database and then do an update. But the option by itself does not exist and should always be treated as three separate options. The next thing the author talks about is showing more user-friendly aliases, I guess, for the options available in the application. These would be things in Pac-Man like dash install, dash remove, dash update, dash find. And if you've actually looked at the man page for something like Pac-Man, you'd realize that you don't actually need to come up with new options for these because they already exist. Most applications that have a well-made man page and have well-made options already have longer form versions of the options that are available. It's just that for most people, they use the shorthand version because, you know, writing out something like, I don't know, uh, dash dash download only takes way longer than dash w if you know what dash w already means. Now, as this is an optional feature on top of the regular options, it's not going to break the application by not having these longer form options actually available. And you could get away with doing crowdsourcing for the applications where they're not available. It's going to be a lot of work, but I think that something like that actually is doable. Where it becomes a problem, though, is with the description of what each of the options actually do. So, 
it doesn't really get around the problem of man pages not always being the clearest thing available. Like, if you... For, yeah, here we go. Here's a great one. All of this explains this single option. All of it's important to understanding what the option actually does, but just dumping this on your screen does not help you any more than just looking at the man page. So at least from my perspective, you'd basically have to rewrite the man page for every single application you want to support having these tooltips. And rewriting the man page is actually a pretty big problem because you're going to have two sets of documentation and you need to make sure that your documentation now doesn't fall out of date with any of the applications you're actually supporting. So you either have no better than the existing man page or tons of documentation that you have to go and maintain alongside the application. I don't know if there's a way that you can actually do these tooltips in a way that's actually useful. Now, I sort of touched on this before, but the author also mentions a hinting on and a hinting off mode. Hinting off is more akin to the regular sort of way you would interact with a terminal. I still think that all of these question marks should be hidden, but what it's going to be hiding at this stage is a description of what each segment of the command actually means. This part right here has the same problem I've mentioned before, where it becomes very difficult to manage, but at least with argument and then I wouldn't have package here because that's very specific to the application, have that as something like argument or value, this part is completely manageable. Now the last thing, funnily enough, the author calls the hardest thing to implement, but in reality, it is by far the easiest and existing terminals could probably just do this right now. That being having a toggle to go and enable sudo rather than having to go and just write out the command. That honestly wouldn't take too long and then also have the option to go and su into root and then showing a warning when you actually do this. Uh, I haven't actually read the warning. We trust you have received the usual lecture from the local system administrator. Oh, this is literally just the uh, the pseudo lecture. Yeah, th this would be something pretty straightforward to do. You could probably implement this in like half an hour. You could implement this in an existing terminal with no problem whatsoever. So overall, I think this is a really interesting idea that has some serious problems with the way that you could actually implement it in the real world. Obviously, the UI would be fairly straightforward. There's nothing really complex there. It's just getting useful information into the application without it just being basically a toy problem. If you want to have it be, oh, it only works with a very small number of applications, LS, CP, MV, package managers, other basic things you know are going to be there, that's fine. That's perfectly doable. You could probably throw it together in like a weekend, really. But... If you want it to be an actual terminal at the scale of a regular terminal you're going to be using, I don't know of any way you could realistically manage a project like that. But things like the pseudo toggle are just a great idea, and there's a reason why a lot of file managers basically use that interaction method. So let me know in the comment section down below what you actually think about this interaction method, if you think it's feasible to actually implement it, if it's something you would ever use, or maybe you just don't want terminals to ever change and you still do everything in a TTY. I would love to know. So if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to only Barrow Pay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T, available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robinson Plays for a live stream twice a week, upload about five or so YouTube shorts, and this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.